بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الأشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so uh, we apologize for the lateness of one I finished late, uh, work late so just about managed to eat and come and walk here so uh, سامحوني على التأخير forgive me for my lateness so um, we have reached um, book, uh, sorry, Adars uh, al Rabi', the fourth lesson of book one. And we have entered into um, the Huruf al Jar. We have we've started to talk about the Al Huruf al Jar, the prepositions. And we mentioned last week that they are Huruf. Particles can be split into, can be categorized into two in relation to how they come or what they enter onto. So there are huruf which are mukhtasa, which are specific, and there are huruf which are ghayru mukhtasa, which are unspecific. What's meant by specific and what is meant by unspecific? Specific meaning that they only come with uh, before certain things or they come before for example before verbs or they become they come before um, asma nouns so the huruf al jar they only come before nouns they are mukhtasa bil asma they are specific to nouns and that's why last week we talked about the alamatul uh, asma the signs of a noun or nouns, the ways in which you can identify a noun. And we said there are four signs. We said there are four signs. And the reason why we mentioned, uh, we, back, we decided to mention uh, the signs of a, a noun uh, last week and this week is because now all four signs have come. All four signs have come by studying the prepositions. And that is because the prepositions, when they come before a noun, they make the noun change case ending. We mentioned previously that the origin of a noun is that they are nakiratun marfur. Nouns in its original form, they are indefinite, meaning they do not they do not come with alif lam prefixed to the word and they have tanween at the end like the word baytun baytun that means a house it's indefinite how do we know it's indefinite because we do not see the al prefix to the beginning and we see the tanween naam so nouns in its original form they are indefinite also, in this original form, nouns are what we call marfu'un. They end with the case ending dhammatan. Yeah? They end with the case ending, which is dhammatan, the un. Baytun, kitabun, masjidun. Therefore, if you were to go to a qamus or a mu'jam, a dictionary, and you look for a noun, you will find the noun without the alif lam and with tanween. Yeah? Baytun, Kitabun, Mindilun, Miftahun, Masjidun. So nouns originally are marfu' the end of Dhammatan. Yeah? But what does a harfu jar do? The huruf al jar. What do the prepositions do? The prepositions they change the case ending of the noun that comes after it. They can change it from marfu'un to majrurun. Yeah? To the genitive case or the word ending with the kasaratan or kasara. For example, for example, in your lesson, lesson four, I'm just gonna move the mic so the sisters can hear. In lesson four, at the beginning we have Al Baytu. We have Al Baytu. The word Al Baytu. Which means Na'mechon. What does al baytu mean? The house. Okay, just the word al baytu. Okay, please tell me, number one, 
Why do? Why has this word only have uh, one dhamma? Or in other words, it is no. It's ma'rifatun. The reason why we say al baytu, yeah, and not al baytun, because this word is ma'rifah. It's definite. There's two signs of a word being definite that it has alif lam or al prefix at the beginning, al bayt, and also when you have the al, you don't have the tanween. Al baytu. So this word is ma'rifah. That's number one. Now, second question. Why is it al baytu? Why isn't it al bayta with a fatha? Why isn't it al bayti with a kasra? Why is it al baytu with a dhamma? Why is it marfu'? That's the origin. The origin that all nouns are marfu'. Yes? So we have al baytu. The origin is that nouns, they are marfu'. Meaning the end, the end of a dhamma or dhamma tan. In this case, a dhamma because the word is ma'rifa. It's definite. It has al prefix. Okay, so in your book you have al baytu. Then the book after the colon shows fi, meaning in. And this fi is what we call a harfu jam, which we mentioned last week. Why is a preposition called harfu jam in Arabic? What does jam mean? Or like Imam al ajrumi al ajrum in his book al ajrumiya he doesn't they, he doesn't call it harf jar he so calls it harf khafd kha fa dad he calls it harf khafd yeah which is a synonym of jar what does it mean we mentioned last week what to pull down yes it means to pull jarra if I said Jarrartu Muhammad, Muhammadan, yeah, I pulled Muhammad. If I as for Khafada, it means to be low or come down, like me talking about the temperature in the, when we talk about the weather. Darajat Harara Mun Khafida. The temperature is low; it has gone down. So Jarr and Khaf. It means to be down or to be pulled. In other words, be pulled down. So if we know that the origin of a noun is marfu', this haraka, this vowel sign, is it on top of the word or below? The dhamma. When we place a dhamma at the end of a word, do we place it on top of the letter or below? On top. So it's high, yeah? It's above. But when it is majroor, when it has a kasra, where is the vowel sign? It's down, it's low, it's been pulled down, it's below. And this is what the huruf al jar do, or the huruf al khafd. It pulls, it changes the case ending, pulls it down to make it a kasra, or kasra tan. So when we put fi now, we have al baytu. When we place fi, a harf al jar, in front of al baytu what happens to the case ending of al baytu it is pulled down it is changed from marfu' to majrur it's changed to from marfu' it's pulled down and the case ending change changes to majrur it becomes fil bayti and this is what a harfu jar does it makes the ism after it majroor. Therefore, the ism has a new name. The noun after harfujar, it has a new name, and the name is now ismun majroorun. A noun which is majroor. A noun which is case ending, end of the kasra or kasra tan. In general, this is the general principle. You're going to find that there are other signs of. The genitive case was majroor. So now we say fi is a harfu jar preposition. Al bayti ismun majroor. Why is al bayti majroor? Because of the harfu jar. That's what the harfu jar does. The preposition. It changes the noun after from marfu to majroor, and that's why they are called huruf al jar 
or like in Al-Ajrumiya or the people of Kufa the two uh, uh, side or the two um, groups of scholars the Basriyun the, the, the grammarians from Basra and the grammarians from Kufa the people of Kufa they say Huruf al khafd it's just a different terminology same meaning yeah Huruf al khafd prepositions and the people of Basra they say Huruf al jar but they are synonyms they are synonyms so this is what Harf al jar does the Huruf al jar they change the case ending of the noun after it. Now that we know that a harf of jar comes before a noun, and we know that the noun after it changes to the genitive case or changes to majroo. Now I can repeat what I said last week. There are four ways to identify a noun. Two, four, sorry, four specific uh, signs. Yeah which you can use to identify a noun in a sentence. Okay? Number one, we mentioned, Na'ya Ahmed. What's the first way to identify, and I don't want you to try, start with these two we mentioned now, or, or anything we mentioned today. Um, what's the first way to identify a noun? Okay, number one, the sign of a noun that it accepts tanween. The first sign, or we call alama, the first alamatun of a noun, or the way you can identify a noun, is that it can accept tanween, the double vowel. So if you see a word with dhammatan, or fathatan, or kasratan in general, then it is a what? A noun. Because it accepts ten. Mm. For example, on page one of this book, Baytun, Kitabun, Masjidun, Miftahun, they are all nouns. How do we know? Because it has the sign of a being noun, it has ten mean at the end. Okay? So that's the first sign. Number two, the second way to identify a noun, the second way to identify a noun. Has, has an in, in between. Yes, it accepts the prefix al. It accepts the alif lam. It has al, or it can have and it accept al at the beginning. So, for example, al baytu, al baytu, al baytu is a noun. How do we know that al baytu is a noun? Because we see the prefix al at the beginning. It can accept al. Yeah? So, or alif lam. So that's the second sign of an, a noun. The third we have mentioned today, and it came in this fourth lesson, that the noun can be majroor. The noun, it can be majroor, meaning that case ending can end with a kasra or kasra tan. Okay? Verbs don't have kasra. It cannot be like majroor, you know, they don't have kasr or kasr al in the case ending. As a case ending, yeah? So it's majroor, so nouns, they can be majroor, as in, fil bayti, in the house. Al bayti, you see, it's majroor, therefore, it's a noun. The fact that you saw the kasr, and you saw that the noun is majroor, that is a sign that that word is a noun. And the fourth, we also mentioned today. Kasra. We just mentioned that kasra has a preposition before. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fee, fee or, or, yeah. Or, or, uh, it has a preposition before it. Yeah. Dukhul. They say dukhul al harf huruf al jar. That the harf al jar or the huruf al jar can enter upon it or they come before it. So if you see a noun. Oh, sorry. If you see a word with a preposition, a harf al before it, know that that word is a noun. Because from the signs of a noun, that the that it allows the preposition enters upon it or comes before it. Now, so fil bayti, it's 
So now, how do we know that fil or al bayti is a, a noun? Because there's a fee before it, there's a harf jar before it. Therefore, to summarize, a noun can have uh, signs, has signs in order for it to be identified as a noun. Or sorry, a word has signs in order for it to be identified as a noun. It can have one sign, it can have two, it can have three, but it can never have four. It can never have four. It can have one, as in Baytun. Baytun, the sign of that being a noun is what? The first sign, Tanmi. Baytun, Bamatan, Tanmi. Al Baytu has two signs. What does it? No, one sign, sorry. Al Baytu has one sign, and that is? It has the prefix, the prefix Al. Okay. Um, fil bay T. Oh, Al Bay T. Let's just do Al Bay T first. Al Bay T. Has how many signs? Two. Two. Alif Lam. And then? Majroor. It's also Majroor. End of the Kasra. Fil Bay T has three signs. Number one, it has Alif Lam. Number two, it is Majroor. End of the Kasra. Number three, it has a preposition before a fee. So, it can have three signs. Why can't it have all four? It's because a noun can never be ma'rifa and nakira at the same time. It cannot be definite and indefinite at the same time. So it cannot accept tanween and the prefix al at the same time. So you can never have um, al-baytin. That's, that's, that will have all four, four signs, am I right? Al-baytin. Oh, sorry. Fil-baytin. Um, you can never find that. Fil baytin. Yeah, because you cannot have the kasratan and the alif lam at the same time. You will find fil bayti with three signs. So there are four signs of a noun. Alif lam, yeah, or al tanween, majroor, end of the kasra preposition and the preposition before it. Harfu jam before it. Ikhwan, understood? Yes. Okay. So now looking at the dance, we said we went and we were talking about this. Al Baytu, the house, put a preposition before it. Fil Bayti in the house. So fi as you know in they call it Zarfiya. Yeah? They call it Zarfiya, showing the, the makan, the place of it. So Fil Bayti in the house. Al Maktabu, the desk or the office. Yeah? على المكتب on the desk why does المكتب change to المكتب why does it change to مجرور because على is a harf dar and when harf, the harf dar comes before the ism the ism changes to ism مجرور a noun which is مجرور على المكتب on the desk and على has the meaning of العلو of being high, mm. yeah, above, or well, isti'la, to be high or above. That's what we have in the Quran, thumma istawa ala al-arsh. Mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascended above eh, the throne. Naam? So ala has the meaning of being above, of ulu. So ala al-maktabi on the desk. A quick revision of a previous lesson as well. Why am I saying ala al-maktabi? And why am I not saying Alam um, Maktabi? Alam Maktabi. Why am I not ignoring the lamb going straight to the meme and saying Alam Maktabi? Ah, because we've learned something about yeah. sun letters and moon letters. Mm -hmm. So meme and therefore is what? Moon letter. And the ruling of a moon letter is that the lamb before the moon letter is pronounced, is always pronounced. Yeah? Alal Maktabi. And we also mentioned last week, and we said one of the sisters a uh, couple of months ago, they asked a question. 
regarding why are these 14 letters moon and why are the these 14 letters sun and we mentioned last week it's due to what they call qurb al or bu'd al it's regarding whether these the pronunciation of these letters are close to the lam or the pronunciation of these letters are further away or further in pronunciation to the lam so further away in terms of the mouth in the mouth yeah so if you look at the 14 moon letters yeah the 14 moon letters then they are further away in pronunciation that's why you can pronounce the lam al maktab yeah the mean being on the lips yeah al maktab but if you look at the sun letters then they are closer in terms of the area where it's pronounced closer to the lamb yeah um, like in um, uh, the lamb very close yeah in makharij mm-hmm. in where it comes out from the mouth okay so that's the, the moon and sun letters okay so we don't say al maktab we say al maktab because neem is from the uh, moon letters so ala al maktabi on the desk al masjidu the masjid fil masjidi eh? in the masjid i'm going to show you some just really basic analysis now i'rab so we will say fi harf jar al masjidi ismun majrur and if a person wants a little bit more wa alamatu jarrihi and the sign of it being majrur al kasra al zahira ala akhirihi a visible kasra at the end of the word so what's the sign of this word being majrur a a um, it's a kasra al zahira yeah, a kasra which is dahir, apparent, visible. Ala on akhirihi at the end of it, mean the end of the word. Okay, so if we look at fil masjidi, the end of the word is a dal. Yeah, what is underneath the dal? A visible kasra. You can see it. Mm. Yeah, yes. it's a visible kasra. That's a sign of the majru that the kasra is visible. That's what we call. Um, Analysis, a Arab. We will make an analysis. So, fi harf jar al masjidi ism majrur wa alamat jarrihi and the sign of it being majrur al kasra al zahira ala akhirihi a clear and visible kasra at the end. That's simple analysis. Um, and now, al sariri so al sariru the bed. Yeah, marfu. Am I right? And it's a, it's an ism. I do know it's an ism. Number one, or actually only one time. It has proposition in front of. No, no. Asariru. It's not true. Asariru. What's the sign? Al. The sign of it being noun. Then you see that. That's only one sign. But alasariri. Now we have three signs of it being noun. Number one, the ala. The preposition has come before the noun. That means, oh, preposition, preposition has come before the word asari. Therefore, asari is a noun. Because prepositions only come before nouns. Okay, number two. As. The alif la. Let's go in order of when it comes. So, ala, first sign. Harful jar before the word. Number two. Al. Or asari, because it's a sun letter. Al. That's another sign of it being a noun. Asariri. It's majroor. The word is majroor. How do we know it's majroor? A clear and visible kasra, which, which we can see at the end. Al kasra al zahira ala akhirihi. Okay? So, alhamdulillah, those are the signs of the now. Let's go to Ba'a. We did read this also last week, but no. Al muraja'a revision, it aids memory. So, Aina Muhammadun. Okay, everyone. There's a new interrogator pronoun that's come here. A new word. A new word has come. And that is Aina. Aina, yeah. It hasn't come before in this book. And the word comes in this book, then we want to be aware of it. We want to know what it is. We don't want it to 
pay a blind eye to it. So, Aina. Number one. Aina means where. Number one. Aina, it means where. Yeah, in English it means where. Yeah. So number one, we've made the translation. Here's the translation of the word. Aina, it means where. Number two. It's Mabani. It's Mabniyun. Who remember what Mabniyun means? Huh? Yes, those who revise. Naam, Mabani. Remember, you can't take your book with you everywhere. Yeah. Like the poet says. Ilmi ma'i, aina ma yamamtu ahmiruhu, batnun wi'a'un lahu la batnu sanduqi. In kuntu fil bayt, kan al ilmu fihi ma'i, wa in kuntu fil suq, kan al ilmu fi suqi. Laysa bil ilm ma hawa al qamitru, inna ma al ilmu ma hawa al sadru. My knowledge is with me, and wherever I go is with me. When I'm in the house, knowledge is with me. And when I am in the market, my, own, my, the knowledge, my knowledge is with me. Knowledge is not, which is, is not that, that which is stored in a box, a, a book um, preservation box, a book, a box, yes. which is used to contain books in. But knowledge is that which is in the chest, meaning that which is memorized. With me. Ah. So, memorize, Barakul Fikrum. So now, Mabaniyun means indeclinable, unchangeable. What do you mean by that? It means that it never changes. The, the actual surah, the image never changes. It's always Aina. It's never Ainu, oh, yeah. Aini, Ainun, Ainan, Ainin. No, never. It's always Aina. Yeah. It's Mabani. Never changes. Doesn't accept any change. Mabaniyun. So number two. It's Mabani. What we call indeclinable. Does not accept declension. Does not accept case uh, change. Case ending. The, the case ending doesn't change. It's always Aina of the Fatha. Yeah? Mabaniyun. So it never changes. So number one, it means where. Number two, it's Mabaniyun. Number three. It's an ismul istifham. Like ma. Like ma. It's an interrogative pronoun. Number three, it's an ismul istifham. Like I gave you in the sheets, ma. So if you go back to the sheets, you see that ma is also an ismul istifham. Ismul istif. Ham. An interrogative pronoun. A pronoun or word used to question with. To gain a certain answer. It's used to give to ask a question in order to get a certain answer. And that's gonna be number four. Yeah? What kind of answer we're we looking for? Yeah? Well, what kind of information by using Aina, what are we looking to find out? Aina like, so when ma, what we try, it's a su'al an ghayr al-aqil. We said that ma is a, a, a asking about inanimate nouns. Yeah. What is aina asking about? Aina is a su'al an al-makan. It is a su'al, it's asking an al-makan about location, about place. Where is something located? Where is it? Aswalu anil makan. Makan meaning place or location. When you use a, when you in English, and I ask you, where is Muhammad? Am I asking you what time is he coming? Am I asking? Am I asking you what is he? Huh? Am I asking you? About why is he not here? I'm asking you about why? La. I'm asking you where? Where is he at this moment? Where is he located? Where is he situated? Where is he? I'm asking you about the makan. 
the location of Muhammad. Naam? The Makan. So, Aina is a su'alu anil Makan. It's asking about place, the place of something. So, in this question in book, Aina Muhammadun, where is Muhammad? You will see in the answer a place mentioned. You will see in the answer a location mentioned. Because Aina is a su'alu anil makan. It is asking about location. And remember, finally, when we have a ismul istifham, when we have an interrogative pronoun, at the end of the sentence, what do we see? A question mark. Alamat, that's number five. Number five, you will find when the Aina comes, you have to place the Alamatul Istifam as usual. The Alamatul Istifam, which is question mark. Yeah? Aina Muhammadun. Alamatul Istifam, question mark. Where is Muhammad? Question mark. Yes? When you ask the question, the question mark has to be there. It's a grammar rule. So, to summarize, Aina. Number one, it means where. Number two, it's Mabni, indeclinable. It never changes. It's always Aina. Never Ainu, Aini, Ainan, Ainun, Bla. Aina, always Mabni, indeclinable. Number three, it's an Ismul Istifam. It's an interrogative pronoun. Number, th- number four, it's used to ask about the location of something or the place of something. Number five, when you, again, when, whenever you use interrogatives, yeah, interrogative pronouns or particles, then the alam of the must appear at the end of the sentence, the question mark. And we know also, just as a reminder, the alam of the the question mark in Arabic, is opposite, facing the opposite way to English. It's facing the right, whereas English is facing the left. Now, so that is Aina. Yeah. Therefore, let's look at the example now. Aina Muhammadun. Where is Muhammad? Look at the answer. Huwa fil ghurfati. He is in the room. Can you see the word room has appeared? Why? Because Aina necessitates you give me some information. About the location. Yeah. Huh? Mm. Necessitate that you give me where he is. Tell me the location. Ah, Gurfa. Room. Gurfatun means room. Gurfatun means room, and room is feminine. We're going to talk about this as well. So, just, just put that on the side. Gurfa. Gurfatun. It means room. General. What type of room? Bedroom. Living room, no, it's just general, it's just room. Yeah? Ghurfatun. Means room. Or a room. Ghurfatun. Huwa fil ghurfati. Let's look at this sentence now. Because there's something new. Something that we haven't seen. That's all we need to know about. Huwa fil ghurfati. Huwa fil ghurfati. Three. Harfuja means in. Yeah? Al Ghurfati. Ismun is majroor. A noun which is majroor. Wa alama tu jarrihi. And the sign of it being majroor. Al kasra al zahira al akhiri. A visible kasra dead. So fil ghurfati means in the room. Naam? Yes. What does huwa mean? What is huwa? What does it mean? What does it do? Huwa, number one. Huwa, number one. It means he or it. He or it, number one. Now, we're gonna come to that. So, translation first, meaning of huwa is he slash it. Yeah, he slash it. When does it mean he? 
if you are referring to a animate noun. When do you translate it to mean it? If it's referring to an inanimate noun. If I was to ask you, for example, um, where is the car? Would you say to me, he is outside? No, because car is inanimate. So what's the correct word to use? It is outside. It referring to an inanimate noun. Am I right? No. Yeah? Car is inan inanimate. So say, it is outside. Where is I? It is out, it is in the room. Is that correct? No, because it is referring to an inanimate noun. I is animate. So we should say, he is in the room. So that's the difference between he and it. Yeah? He referring to an animate noun, it referring to an inanimate noun. But number two, yeah, we're going to come to what uh, our brother said about the gender. We'll come to that. But number two, number two, when we're referring to it, it's that it is what we call a bamir. We call it in grammar a bamir. And I'm going to just add munfasilun. I'm not going to concentrate on Munfasir for now. Damirun Munfasirun. What does that mean? It means pronoun. Or literally, it means detached pronoun. I just want to focus on pronoun for now and not detached. Who are, or he and it, is a pronoun. What's a pronoun? I'm assuming that we don't know English. So let's go for the basics. What does a pronoun do in English? What does it do? Replace the name. Replace the... Okay, what's a name? Uh, what's a name? If, uh, it replaces a noun. Repl Usually it replaces the subject. Okay? It usually replaces the subject. So let's take a look at this sentence then. Let's look at, look at two English sentences and I'm going to show you that first. We show you um, an animate noun and an inanimate noun. Okay? Muhammad is a student. Muhammad? Is a student a nominal sentence? Am I right? Where is the subject of the sentence? The subject we mentioned that the subject is the main focus of the sentence. Muhammad. Muhammad. Yes. Yeah. Muhammad is the focus. Muhammad. Tell me some information about Muhammad. Give me the khabar, the predicate. Student. Is a student. Muhammad. Student. Student is given information about Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So Muhammad is the subject. Full stop. I want to now tell you a little bit more information about Muhammad. And I want to tell you something about his description. So I'll say, He is tall. Why? And what? So what is he doing here? He has replaced Muhammad. Has substitutes like a substitute has replaced Muhammad, yeah, to avoid repetition. Mm, yeah, yeah. To avoid repetition, Muhammad is a student. Muhammad is tall. Muhammad goes to uh, secondary school. Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. That's, that's repetition. Yeah. It's not eloquent. Yeah? It's not eloquent. Okay, eloquency is to say something in the least amount of words as possible. That's eloquence. That's why the Messenger of Allah, he was the most eloquent of mankind. He was given something because no prophet was given before him. And that was Jawami'ul Kalim. The ability to speak with a small amount of words, but those words had much, so, so much rich, it was rich in meaning. Yeah? Rich in meaning. So that is eloquency. So, Muhammad is a student. He is tall. What is he? 
He is the pronoun. What's the pronoun doing? It's replacing the noun. Muhammad. Let's just give you one example of an inanimate sentence. Okay. Um, um, my car is new. My car is new. What's the subject? Car. My car, yeah? It, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. Huh? What does it do in here? It is a pronoun. It has replaced my car. Why do we use it and not he? Because it is used to refer to or to replace an inanimate noun. And he is used to replace an animal noun. That's, that's what a pronoun does. We can do the same thing in Arabic, and that's what's done here. Yeah? Where's Muhammad? He, as in Muhammad, is in the room. So what does huwa done here? It's replaced the subject. Therefore, huwa is actually a subject also in a sense. Huwa is the subject. Okay? Now, in this answer. But that is what a domir, a pronoun is. Does everybody understand that? Same kind of process in Arabic. But what is the second word? Why is it called a detached pronoun? Because Arabic has attached pronouns and detached pronouns. Pronouns which are standalone. They are not suffix to anything. Yeah? Pronouns which are not suffix in the place at the end of anything. And we have pronouns which are attached where they are suffix. In English they call it personal pronouns and possessive pronouns. They call it personal and possessive. For example, he is a personal pronoun. Showing the person he. The individual, he, as in third person, masculine. What's the per, the uh, possessive version of he? It's his. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. His is a pronoun. It's a possessive pronoun. It shows possession. Huh? Okay. Um, Muhammad uh, is a student. Yeah? Muhammad is a student. Um, his school is famous. His school is famous. Yeah. What's his doing? Show that he he has a school. He possesses. He owns a school. Meaning he is part of the school. Yeah, it belongs to him because he's part of it. Do you understand? In that sense. So his is the possessive version. Arabic the possessive pronouns. Like his, her, their, e i r, yeah, their, they are all they all come as attached pronouns. They are all attached. Oh, they are all suffix to the end of a, 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 a noun. I don't want to talk about that. So why am I saying that he is a dhamim al Because huwa is standalone. It's not attached to anything. It's a detached pronoun. Is that understood? Just understand that for now. Yes. Why is it detached? Because it's not attached to anything. Very simple. It's standalone. It's just word by itself. It doesn't need to be attached to anything. So, Aina Muhammadun. Where is Muhammad? Huwa fil ghurfati. He, Bamir, Munfasil, Fi, Hafuja, Al Ghurfati, Ismun, Majur, Wa Ala Mutujabi, Al Kasra, Al Vahira, Al Akhiri. Quite just let you know, all. Um, uh, all uh, asma of istifham, all, so all the maya, they marfu. Okay? The maya, which come at the beginning of the sentence, these the maya, they marfu. Even though you don't see a dhamma at the end. Remember, like I told you before, hadha, ism al shara, it comes at the beginning of the sentence, it's marfu. Oh, yeah, Meaning yeah. that they are, they are in the nominative case. Normally you see a dhamma, dhamma tan. Okay. It ends, but because these words are mabani, don't see that. So, huwa, 
Huwa is marfu. You just have to memorize that. Huwa, the dama'ir, the pronouns are marfu. Okay, these dama'ir and mumtasira, they are marfu. Huwa is marfu. And that's why we can say huwa is a subject. Remember the, the size of the subject, the khab, the mubtada? Number one, it is ma'rifa. Number two, it's marfu. Huwa is also ma'rifa. It's also definite. How do we know it's definite? Because it replaces the definite subject, the definite noun. It's definite. Yeah? Like Muhammad is definite. Huwa is referring to Muhammad. It's definite. Okay? Al Baytu Kabirun. The house is big. Huwa Jamilun Aidan. It is also beautiful. Huwa has replaced what? Al Baytu. Al Baytu is definite. Huwa is also definite. Okay? So these dama'ir are also ma'arifah, are definite. So, number one, huwa means he or it. Number two, in grammar we call it a dhamirun munfasil, detached pronoun. Detached pronoun. Number three, it's mudakkar. Number three, it's masculine. Number three, it's masculine. It refers to a mas- masculine nouns. Yeah? So if I was to say, um, if I was to, and wanted to talk about sayyaratun, which is a feminine noun, I cannot refer to it with huwa. I cannot use huwa. Because huwa is used with, it's mudhakkar. It's for mudhakkar, lil mudhakkar. Okay? So it's mudhakkar, it's masculine. That's why we translate it as he. So it's mudhakkar. Number four, it is mufrad. It's singular. So it only refers to singular nouns. So I can't say, um, judad. The students are new. Huwa fil ghurfa. He is in the room. I can't say, the students are new. He is in the stu- in the room. He is only referring to a singular person. You have to say in English, they. You have to use the plural eh, pronoun. So therefore, mm. if English has it, Arabic definitely also has it. So huwa is mufrad. There is dual version, huma. There is the plural version, hum. So there are dual and plural versions, which will come later on. But huwa is mufrad. Okay? And huwa, like we mentioned, it's, and he, what am I going to say here? It's used for aqil and ghayru aqil. It's used for animate and inanimate nouns. That's why we have the aqil version, we translate, or the aqil, when it's referring to an aqil noun, or when it's substituting an aqil noun, it means he. And if it's substituted and غير واقل and inanimate noun, it means it. Yeah? And that is huwa. Any questions pertaining to huwa? So, it's clear. It's clear. Alhamdulillah. So now everything else should be clear, inshallah. So, Aina Muhammadun. Where is Muhammad? Huwa fil ghurfati. He is in the room. Huwa damirun munfasirun. Yeah? Fi is a harfu jam, which means in. Al ghurfati ismun majroor. Wa aina yasirun. And where is yasir? Everyone, wa means and. And we mentioned before, we call uh, this a conjunction, a harfu al I don't want to go into it. But it's called a wa means and. We call it in Arabic a harfu al in English, they call it a conjunction. But I don't want to go into that because it needs some further explanation. So it's called a harful at conjunction. Yeah? A conjunction. It means and. Okay, so Aina. <coughs> so, uh, Naam. So, what Aina Yasir? And where is Yasir? Yasirun. Who are in Hammami? He is in the bathroom. Hammam, everyone? Al-Hammam means the bathroom. So, huwa dhameerun munfasil 
في حرف جر الحمام اسم مجرور وأين آمنة and where is آمنة هي في المطبخ هي في المطبخ هي في المطبخ she is in the kitchen doesn't mean that men can't be in the kitchen if one doesn't mean that men can't be in the kitchen يعني men should help out for people نعم you said this one is only for masculine ah baraka fik so here here has all the same attributes of huwa except for number three it's for mu'annath and number one it's she or it so number one here means she or it number two it is here is also a dhamir munfasil munfasilun detached pronoun number three it's not mudhakkar here is mu'annath feminine yeah as you can see, she, Mu'annath. And number four, he is also for Mufrad, refers to singular nouns. And number five, he is also refers to inanimate, aqil, uh, so animate, aqil, and inanimate, ghayr aqil nouns. So the only difference between huwa and here is here is feminine. It refers to feminine nouns. Why is it being used here? Because it says, وَأَيْنَ آمِنَةُ Where is Amina? A female name. Aina can be used to ask for any gender. So وَأَيْنَ آمِنَةُ Where is Amina? Amina being a woman. Here she is في المطبخ. She is in the matbakh. Naam. Hey, and I'm going to come back to Amina in a second. أَيْنَ الْكِتَابُ Where is the book? Okay, let's just quickly look at the book. Al-Kitab, it's inanimate, and also it is masculine, yes? How do we know Al-Kitab is masculine? We don't see, but, well yeah, that, who are later on, but now, just there. Just for now, there's no Tama Bota. This is a general principle for now. We can't see the Tama Bota, the, the round tab at least, yeah? So, Ayn Al-Kitab, where is the book? Huwa ala al-maktabi. Huwa ala, huwa, why is huwa used? Because Al-Maktab, is masculine. Now what's the translation? It is on the table. Why have I translated it as it? Because al-maktab is غير عقل. In hand. It is on the table. And I can't say he is on the table. Because the book is not عقل. Huh? It's not animate. So huwa ala al-maktabi. It is on the table. Huwa dhamirun munbasil ala harfu jar al-maktabi ismun majroor. وَأَيْنَ السَّاعَةُ And where is the watch? السَّاعَةُ means watch. And we know that watch is what? Masculine or feminine? Feminine. مُعَنَّف Why? Because we can see the Tamar Buddha. So أَيْنَ السَّاعَةُ Where is the watch? Here. Here as he is. Why? Because the Sa'a is مُعَنَّف. Here عَلَى السَّرِيرِ It is on the bed. Yeah. Here is a dhamir muntasil ala harfu jar, which means on as-sariri, eh? the bed. Eh? Ismun majroor. Okay. Let's go back to Amina and we we'll finish with Amina. Okay? Yeah. Go back to Amina and we we'll finish our lesson with Amina. Akhi, there's a typo here, isn't it? The reason why is it is the reason why I've come back to Amina because there's a typo, sir. Amina too. There's a typo. Is that a typo? Yes. Yeah, look. Yeah, no, it's it's khilaf. <laughs> Amina too. Akhi, there's no alif lam. So why is it? It's meant to be Amina too, sir. Should we correct? Should we correct the books? Eh? So we should make Aminatun. Yani Muhammadun, Akhi. Muhammadun. Eh? Yes. Yeah. 
It's meant to only have one dhamma. And here is the rule, here's the reason why. Number one, names don't it, except al alif lam anyway. You know, what does, what does al do? It makes the word ma'rifa. Definite. Names are definite. Mm. But I say to you, Ahmed, you're going to look to the left. Because there's Ahmed. Mm. He's known, he's ma'roof. Yeah. yeah? But I say Hanif. Yeah, you're looking up to the right. Ma'roof, Hanif. You understand? So names are definite. They don't need alif lam. Okay? To make them definite. Mm. But, so forget about, we're not going to look at the al. But aminatu. Why has it got one dhamma? The rule is that all female names are what they call dip tote. Or in Arabic they call it mamnu'un min as sarf. And I'm just gonna just mention that because there's a whole lesson towards the end. Or lessons. They are mamnu'un min as sarf. Forbidden from accepting all three case endings. And say also means they never come as ten wing, they never accept ten wing. So female names. So number one, female names never have never have ten wing. Ten wing. Okay? So how do we know that they are names then? How do you know that's a female name? How do you know that is a name? You look at the context. Yeah, it's fine in the sentence. You could, you could tell whether it's a name or not. And also just with tatabur, uh, following, um, knowing many different types of names which come back in Arabic, you will know it's say it's a name, a female name. Like for example, we know Maryam is a female name. In case we've come to know, obviously a famous, um, the, the famous um, um, mother of Isa alayhi salam, yeah, Maryam. We know that Maryam is a female name. Just like Khadija, the famous wife, radiallahu anha, the famous wife of the Mitzvah also. So when we have Khadija, we know it's a female name. It's ma'roof. So it becomes known. These names become known to the people that they are names. Okay? So, Aminatu uh, is a female name. So female names, number one, never have tanween. So you never see Maryamun, or Zainabun, or Aminatun, Khadija to you know you will never see that. Or we'll never hear, hear, hear of that. Okay? It's always without telling me. Number two, they never accept a kasra. They never accept a kasra. You will never ever visibly see a kasra at the end of uh, female names because well, they are dip tote uh, dip referring to two trip tote referring to try three so all nouns all male names generally speaking generally, so generally speaking nouns are trip tote they can accept uh, they can be they can accept dhamma fatha and kasras but dip totes they only accept fathas and dhammas I'm not saying that they can't be majroo. I never said that. I never said they can't be majroo. That's um, that's another that's another. I'm not gonna say. It. Just no. I don't. No, no, no. no why? No why? No why? Please say. No why? So, Amina, you might see Amina ta, and Amina tu. You will never see Amina ti. Just know that. You will never see that uh, the uh, female names. So they can never be majroo. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> they can never, you can never, they, you know, like I said, you know, now, you, now you know, I'm glad you said that because why am I saying, um, why am I saying, Al Fil Ghurfati, Al Ghurfati is Ismun Majroor wa Ala Mutajari, and the sign of the very Majroor, a Kasra, Zahira, visible Kasra, yeah, at the end. Why am I saying that? Isn't that understood? The reason why I'm saying that is because some words you don't visibly see the sign of it being mm. Okay? So just know that. Okay. I don't want to talk about this way. And Gerard Tani, he pulled me in the pulling lesson. 
in the harf of Jabrasil. <laughs> You're calling me, Akhi. <laughs> okay, so Aminatu ah, is a female name. I'm not gonna ask now. Why? <laughs> no, no, keep asking, Barakov. These are all learning opportunities for us, Barakov. So Aminatu ah, is a female name. The reason why it has one mama, because female names are diptot, are mamnu' min al sarf. I'm not gonna go too much into that. They're gonna come later on in the book. And mamnu' or diptot words, they never have tanween. And you know, they never accept a kasra. You don't visit this year, kasra then. Okay? It's when you only see a dhamma of fatha. And that is to the end of today's lesson. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu ala ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubi laik. Next lesson, inshallah, I'll give you a, work sh- uh, a sheet showing the four signs of uh, a noun written down in our sheets. And also um, uh, an explanation of the prepositions. And also a sheet for aina. A sheet for where, and also a sheet for huwa and here, or huwa separate, and here separate, and then also another sheet for female names. Zakhmullah khayr, if there's any questions, sisters, just put a paper underneath the sheet, and if you have any questions, brothers, also, would it be, it doesn't accept al, that one of the rules um, yeah, that's, that's, that's names, it's not known, anyway. Yeah, it's known, you know. yeah, names don't have an anyway. Yeah, so you don't need to do that. When it comes to other words, so, yeah. no, you're going to see Mamnu Rasaf words, when Al attaches to other words of Mamnu Rasaf, it, it stops being Mamnu Rasaf. You'll see that it's on the There's some things. Now, teacher, that one on top of Elif, what is? It's, uh, it's a castle? It's a mud. What, what does it mean? Uh, it means that there are two yeah. Hamzas there. Yeah, so instead of writing two numbers, write mud. Ah, uh, me and Instead of saying, ah, uh, me and you say, ah, uh, me and So does it mean that you, you make it long? Yes. Ah, me and So all the, the, no, the female name, you make it long in big? No, no. Just this. Just this name. This is It comes from, ah, me and Ah, me and you, me and Yeah, it comes from a different a root. Yeah? Barakallah, fikum. Therefore, there's no questions, then Zakla